Hi folks, we're at the hangar here today with the airplane as you can see. This excerpt from the part one video, you can see uh, the large louver on the right hand side of the airplane. Change I made to the entry point for the uh, air for the man main radiator. And in this uh, shot we can see the, uh, the large exit louver on the, uh, on, the, on the left side of the airplane. So what we did was we, uh, we made a couple of flight tests to try to establish what these changes were doing, what effects they were having on the, on the performance, it's just specifically water temperature. So first we taped up the louvers, we made a flight test to see what uh, its effect would be. We then taped up the uh, air entry modification back to its original state. And this established three different temperatures. One, the left being the best case, center was being the louvers were blocked, and on the right is when the uh, air entry to the main radiator was changed. In this video, part two, we'd like to discuss the effects um, and modifications I'd like to make to the heater core and what uh, its effects are on the, on the performance of water temperature. So a few days after the previous videos, I made this test light, and we establish here our base mark that we're, again, we're near the end of the green, but in the green. And then several minutes later, we plug the uh, that two and a half inch inlet, uh, take off, and then make another test light. And from here, we can see that uh, we're in the middle of the yellow arc. So we've established with this small air inlet duct, approximately two and a half inches in diameter, in conjunction with its matching exit air louver, approximately eight by five, that the two of them are contributing approximately five degrees in the total water temperature cooling. Five degrees is something; is a good starting point, but I'd like to uh, I'd like to see it contribute more. I'd like to, in fact, I'd like to better increase it to about ten degrees. What I'm going to do is increase the air inlet size and also put on a more aggressive higher flow exit louver. So to do that, looking at the original heater core inlet here, two and a half inches, we cut away the whole front face and created an opening of approximately four and a half by, by two and a half. We made a matching aluminum plenum, brought that forward to the front of the cowl and glassed that in. It is now in its final configuration that I'm going to go with for uh, all the setups with the louvers, uh, air intake changes, etc., etc., to make this uh, baby cool. So historically, with this machine, I've been flying it for a few years and I've been reluctant to make drastic changes in the past because everything you do affects everything and not to mention the fact that everything has a cost involved it's time weight and balance etc etc so I've had the components of this thing um, in the engine for, for a while I just took my time getting around to to uh, to where it is today so from, from the previous videos, what you can see here is, is I had a set of losers here, but they were larger. And what I didn't point out in the last video is what was happening, as I say, everything affects everything. The exit area of these louvers was all the way down to here. And what was happening was I was getting hot air off the engine going into what, what you see here are my cold air intakes. Um, I have other cold air intakes in the windows which work very well. These are not working all that well. I need to put a, a small cup around there to pick up a little bit more air to optimize those. The other thing there was a flat very flat louver here in this in this location which is where the uh, the hot air exits from my heater core which is acting as a as a secondary heat exchanger for my from a water jacket square flat surface very shallow louver type thing that I bought from a basically I had bought it from a hardware store so yeah this is what was there so I replaced that with these louvers here so I've got six outlet louvers approximately uh, three and a half inches wide by half an inch and I'm getting 
approximately the same calculated airflow as you get from this, but I'm not sure how well this thing was working because the depth of these louvers is so small that I'm not sure it was giving me a, a negative pressure and actually drawing air, air out, of the, um, out of the cowlings. So in conjunction with changing that, what I call a, a better or more aggressive type louver, and changing these louvers, as you know, I had changed, I had a small two and a half inch round intake um, going into there. And I've swapped that out for this rectangular smooth profile intake, which I like physically, visibly a lot better. It's, a, it's definitely a lot better. And of course, it's, it's the most air I can get into. I can get into that, that heat exchanger, which is what, what it actually is, is an oil cooler. Um, and I'm using it as a heat exchanger uh, or heater core. So it gives me, it gives me uh, hot air to fly for, for cabin heat and it acts as a secondary uh, radiator. So the primary radiator is down here, as you've seen before, it's a big Griffin radiator. And I've changed this profile to give this uh, added indentation into the cowl, which in my previous video showed that I was getting uh, approximately 10 degree improvement in air by, by move, moving this back and giving me a, a, a gradual entrance into, into, the, into the radiator. For the heater core, this is what used to be here. This, this was a two and a half inch diameter straight shot round tube. And as you can see, I've changed it for a rectangular. You can't see much in there. But I've gone almost five by three, maybe a little less than that, two and a half inch uh, diameter holes, a little under five square inches of, of air. The other profile here with a five by three, it's not quite five by three, but that would be 15 square inch air intake. Drop a couple, say it's 13. Even still, I've increased the surface area more than two and a half times, so I'm getting as much air into there as I can. Yesterday I took it for a flight and in my previous video I was hoping to get an improvement of double. I had the small uh, round air intake to that cooler was giving me a five degree uh, improvement above my uh, water temperature. I, I proved that by flying it with it open and then masking it over. This I have flown. I flew it last night. I don't have, uh, I did not take a video because I didn't have the camera with me. But I was hoping to double that up to 10. In fact, I discovered that this, this opening and the, and the new uh, louvers as you see here actually are giving me a total combined improvement of about 12 degrees. So I'm very happy with that and happy to say that I think I'm going to be staying with the way it is, get some flights in, get used to this thing, and uh, just see how well it does. I think I'm there, and if not, very, very close. And if not, if it's a really hot day, and I want to climb in a hurry, I've pointed this out before, but this is probably a, a, a better video. That's my water spray, and I'll turn that on now, and you can have a look and see what that does. There's two streams of water coming out of there. Puts out a pretty good amount. Doesn't look like much, but when you... Uh, you're doing 100 miles an hour, 80 miles an hour on a climb, putting out that water, and it gets onto the radiator. It does a, it does a super job. So I activate that here. I've just got a switch on the on the panel. Turn that on. Turns on the water. Turn the mains off. Yeah. So my ace on the hole, or my my last. Last resort is to turn on that water spray if, if for some reason, uh, you know, on those few exceptionally warm days, uh, I've still got, I've still got that plan. So, yeah, so this little, this water tank here, just, I just put it on the back seat. It has a large, large opening, and I, uh, I carry around a couple, a couple of, what if I go flying anywhere in, in the summertime, I carry around a couple of jugs, uh, windshield washer, antifreeze jugs that I can get water anywhere at a, gas station uh, or if you land and land at that airports get it out of the bathroom etc now some of you might be asking that's nice you've 
you made improvements in your water cooling, you're putting in way more air than you were, um, you increase your cooling. What about airspeed? Well, I'd like to point out that this is a Wagero 2 plus 2, which is a copy of a PA14, which is basically a four-place Super Cub. It's got 35 foot 9 inch wingspan, almost nothing you can do with this airplane will speed it up and conversely, short of putting a set of floats on the bottom, there isn't all that much that slows it down either. I've tried a lot of things. I've, I've put, uh, I put these speed fairings here on the, on, the, on the upper gear legs thinking that would help didn't do the damn thing. Put these here on the wing roots hoping that might help didn't do the damn thing. I put these fairings on the uh, on the flap hinges. And the main reason I did it is because without them, I was banging my head on these things all the time. So they come down like that. But the other thing I was hoping is that maybe they would also uh, enable this airplane to go a little bit faster. Didn't do a damn thing. Uh, I've got eight by six tires on here. Currently, that's what came with the kit. These are air tracks. For a while, I bought a set of, of six by six, fit the same uh, same rims, etc. Tried it, didn't do a damn thing. Doesn't go one bit faster. So, airspeed is not something I worry about too much with this airplane. And in fact, airspeed has been one of my problems. This is a Mazda 13B engine, and I'm not the only guy in the world using this. There's a lot of guys using it, and have been successful with it. It's a good engine actually makes a better airplane engine than it does a car engine because you just cannot get the, uh, the fuel economy in a car application. The fuel economy is important, but it's not the most important thing in, a, in, a, in an airplane. What you want is reliability. And these engines are good. They're rugged. As long as you know how to run them, you either pump oil into the combustion chamber or what I do is I, I mix two-stroke oil in the gasoline. I mix it at 100 to 1, high test unleaded, and it, it works great. Other things I, I'd like to point out while we're looking at the nose here is this: this is the, uh, the ram air intake from my from my throttle body. This engine's fuel injected, so this is an oil cooler. This is an oil cooler, main radiator, secondary radiator, or heater core inlet. I have in the past tried various combinations. If you watched my previous video on flight testing cow mods, you may have noticed in, in the, one of the photos I'm showing the various things happening with, uh, with, with the water temperature and not paying too much attention to anything else. I got more oil cooling than I needed. And in the past, what I had done was I had turned this oil cooler into a secondary radiator. It's actually bigger than the little one I've got in here. It helped. I got, I got much better water uh, jacket control. But I had cold water and I had hot oil. What you don't want to do with a Mazda is let your oil temperature rise out of control. You've got to keep both the water jack jacket temperature and the oil temperature under control. In a Lycoming, Lycoming or almost any other piston engine, your, your oil temperature can go up into 240 degree, 260 degree before you hit red line on a, on a, on a Lycoming. You cannot do that with the rotor. You've got to keep that. You've got to keep the uh, the return oil temperature after the coolers back into the engine below 210 degrees. You simply have to. And the reason is is because that oil is what's used to cool the rotors. It enters the engine block, is immediately pumped into the e shaft or crankshaft, you would call it in a conventional engine, and through holes in the in the e shaft, it oils the internals of the rotors, and inside the rotors and on the edges of the rotors on the on the faces that are going around this way, are oil seals, and if that return oil isn't kept below 210 degrees, you can and will damage the the oil seals that are on those on the side seals of the of the the, the rotors. From sustain, if you, if you operate this thing at sustained temperatures at 210 or more. I've always enjoyed my cold oil. 
been annoyed with the fact that I've been having trouble getting uh, the water temperatures under control. But I think I'm finally there, happy to say. Looking forward to just flying this thing and uh, getting some more hours on it. I spend a lot of time working on this thing. I'm not the only guy flying these engines and uh, the only guy in the world flying a, a, a Mazda 13B rotary. Uh, there's some guys that have 20Bs, which is a three rotor version. This is a 13B, which is a two rotor version. And uh, yeah, I'm not the only guy on the planet with it. I'm one of the few guys in Canada who actually has one. So what I was saying before was airspeed has been one of my problems. This is a slow airplane. This thing climbs at uh, between 80 and 90 miles an hour, depending on what I want to push. And it cruises between 100 to 105 miles an hour. Not a lot of speed change. That's been one of my one of my problems. The guys who are successful with this are flying RVs and glass type airplanes. And in my opinion, they're getting they're getting a significant amount of their cooling by airspeed. They can just think about it. If I'm going, I'm climbing at I'm climbing at 80 or 90 miles an hour. These guys are climbing at 120 miles an hour. I cruise at 100 to 105. They're cruising between 150 and 180. So for the same power settings, they're getting one and a half, 1.8 times the amount of cooling air through through their oil coolers, heater cores, and radiators. It's a uh, it's a tough game I've been in, and uh, it's been enough. It's been driving me crazy, but kept me interested, kept me busy. I think I might actually be there. Happy to say. So the only, you know, with, the, with an airplane that's this slow, the only way you can get more air through it is to, you know, make make subtle improvements like this. Add an extra cooler. If I if I had more airspeed, I would. I'm sure I would have been cooling this engine at at the degree that I'm cooling it now a long time ago. I've tried everything. I'm almost exasperated. The only thing I can think that's going to make this thing cool is just a get get a little get more air into that rad, get more air into the secondary cooler, and on top of that get more air out of the cowlings and uh, I've been successful at that. So let's just see, you know, we'll get some more get some more flights on this baby and uh, if you're watching these videos, uh, you know, I'll keep the camera on the temperatures and we'll see how we do. And uh, looking forward to the next flight actually. And we'll see you then.